Captain of Industry is a new 2022 amazing factory and city building game. As I make this video, it's still in early access. Don't wait for it to leave early access. It's definitely ready for you to play, for you to test it. It's definitely worth it. The only reason I'm mentioning that it's in early access is because we are still getting quality of life improvements and changes to the game, which may means that when you see this video, my screen could look different from your screen. I've already spent probably a hundred hours in this game and definitely planning to spend even more. I've completed all of the technologies, I've done all of the productions, I've posted on the channel a full let's play that's starting completely from scratch to sending the rocket into space. We've also done a number of tutorial guides and perfect layouts so don't hesitate to check in the video description below if you want to see that. But today what I wanted to do is my top 10 tips. This video is for everybody who are going to cover some very basic tip but also some quite advanced one. I know that this game may not look as amazing as some of the other 2022 games we just released but it's so much more deeper than what you expect. A key feature is really the terraforming of the map. When you dig for resources, you're actually digging. If you dump a lot of resources into the sea, you create a new island. So the map is really fully terraformable and the amount of different resources also that you have to manage is mind-blowing. Of course, don't hesitate to ask any questions in the comments below. Do check my full let's play as I said. But let's dive right now into my top 10 tips to help you survive and thrive into Captain of Industry. In many games, the goal is to develop as quickly as possible. That is not true in Captain of Industry. Actually, developing too quickly or too much will often lead you to a death trap, to a death spiral, where it becomes very hard to save your city. So tip number one is really don't rush. Develop at your own rhythm. There's really no reason to rush. Don't feel like you have to keep expanding if you're not ready. Or to say differently is make sure that your foundation are stable. Any new thing that you build to your city, make sure it's working well before you move to the next one. Having said that, you shouldn't just let your city run when you're thinking about things. Don't hesitate to use the pause functionality. Press space or click over here on the pause button. When you're trying to solve something or when you're building a completely new layout, just pause the game. There's no reason to let the game run. You can pause it and you can use also the blueprint mode, the planning mode by pressing the B button or this symbol over here. This way, any new building you place on the map, even if you're not paused, will not get built. It is paused, as you can see over here. Now we need to unpause it before any resources get delivered to it and it starts being built. This way, if you've made an error, if you want to change it, that won't be a problem. It will be easy, you won't waste resources. On top of pausing and using blueprint, in the second tip is I really suggest you use the C button. With C, you're going to be able to copy things and use it for two ways. The first one is whatever you want to build, build it in the corner on the map, not exactly where you want it. This way, when you're ready, you just copy it and then you place it exactly where you want it to be, but you still have your blueprint somewhere else in case you need to change it. And secondly, the second reason why it's super useful to you see is when you do that, you can see exactly how much it's going to cost you, right? I can see it's 607 yellow gold parts, it's 1,206 red parts and you can see how much I have, right? We can see that I have 2,688 of those red parts, so I have enough basically, right? This way you'll see if you're ready to build it or if you need to wait, if you need to get more stocks before you build it. Because the worst thing is when you're trying to build something new and you only build half of it and then this half is obviously not working because you need the other half to ma make it work, but you're stuck in between. Similarly, you can use the U button, U stands for Unity. This resource can enable you to quick deliver everything, right? To deliver all of the resources instead of using trucks. This will be delivered instantly. But with the U button like this, I can see I need 97.8 Unity, for example, right? I have 435 over here right now, so that's perfect. But let's assume, for example, that I have only 50 at this point. Then I can see, once again, I don't have enough for a full unity of this right now. So maybe I need to wait to get a bit more unity for it once again to not be stuck in the middle. And then the last building team I wanted to share over here is the F button. I still see a lot of people that don't know what F can do. So if you press F, you're going to flip a button, which means you're basically mirroring it on its side. Another way to say it is, if you look at this furnace over here, I have on the left side, the slug. On the right side, the exhaust. 
the, now if I flip it, the exhaust is on the left side and the slag on the right side. And with that, I can put both exhausts next to each other and the slag on the opposite side. And similarly, if I do it once again, and I have both slags on the same side, right? So it can be very useful to have compact layouts. Again, this is the F button. Tip number three is do not overproduce. Or said more precisely, be really mindful about what you overproduce. Let me show you with a few examples what I mean. Most productions will have a byproduct. For example, over here, this is my rotary clean gas. The goal over here is taking some limestone and something else, for example, hydrogen, to make some cement. But I'm also producing some exhaust. Over here, I'm taking some uranium, adding a bit of acid to create some yellow cake. But I'm also creating some toxic slurry. And you can't ignore those byproducts. If you don't do anything with those byproducts, for example, over here, the exhaust, as you can see, I have 20 of exhaust that is stuck into the rotary clean, then the production will stop. Over here, I have enough limestone, I have enough hydrogen to start producing more cement, but because I haven't done anything with the exhaust, then it is blocked. And some of these products, byproducts, overproductions are not too hard to deal with. For example, the exhaust over here or the CO2, usually you can just put a smokestack like this. Right now it's paused. If I unpause it, you'll see, you know, it starts, the fume starts going out. The exhaust is being sent to the atmosphere. It is actually creating some air pollution, so it's not like it's perfect. There are better ways to deal with it, but at least now my production has restarted. Another type of byproduct that's not too hard is the slag or the compost, because I'll be able to easily dump it either into the ground, better yet, like I'm doing over here, into the ocean to create new land, and then I can build on that land. So it's a win-win situation over here. But other byproducts are not so easy to deal with. For example, over here, with this exhaust scrubber, we're creating CO2 and steam low. Once again, those things not too hard, but I'm also creating sulfur and I really need to do something with that sulfur. So that's the first reason why you don't want to overproduce because the more you overproduce, the more you need to deal with those byproducts too and not just whatever you're producing. But even more importantly than that is all of your productions, whatever you produce will use resources. First, it will of course use some inputs, right? For example, over here, my blast furnace will use some copper or crush, some sand, some coal, so a lot of resources to make whatever I want to make. But on top of that, it will also cost me maintenance. When this building is running, it's costing me maintenance. And then there's also all of the fuel to transport those resources, first the inputs, but also the output resources. So all production will cost me a lot of resources, and those resources are limited. There is only a limited amount of resource on your island and on the map. For example, coal, right? This used to be a mountain, right? This used to be a mountain. We've dug all of this. There is still quite a bit of coal here, but when I'm done with this, then there's no more coal on my island. I'm done. I couldn't run it anymore. And similarly, if you look at the map, most of the resource nodes on the map are limited. Once again, if we look at the coal over here, it started with 900,000 of coal. Now there's only 300,000 left. It tells me, for example, that's probably around 160 years left of coal into this coal mine at sort of the, the rate that I'm taking it right now. So basically, when you overproduce, you're really wasting resources, you're wasting time, or basically you're wasting the lifespan of your city. Tip number four, speaking about limited resources, you can of course press L to see the resources on your map to, to put the layer up. And some of these limited resources can really create some huge problem early in the game if you're not careful. In particular, there are three that I want to mention. The first one is crude oil, the second is water, and the third is wood, which are very limited on your island at the start. So you need to make sure that you're ready to get more of these resources from the map before the one on your island are over. On most of the maps, you will only have one crude oil deposit on your island. This is the one for this map. As you can see, 75,000. For this one, for the oil, you need to discover one of these oil rigs. There are actually usually three, I think, on each map. And they have a lot of resources, right? You see this one is, for example, 2 million barrels versus the 75,000 that was on my island. So this will last me a lot of time. But you need to make sure you discover it, maybe you repair it, and you're ready to deliver it to your island. To do that, you will need a cargo depot. So you'll need to do the ship dock repair start using your ship on the map and discover this oil rig and you'll also need to do this research over here 
of the cargo depot and this is after the research lab level 2 so this is why it's quite critical you really need to advance quite a bit to get this first cargo depot and of course build it on your island your island also start with a lot of trees which you can cut to get wood but at least so far in the game we can't regrow it we, can, we don't have a forester or something like this so every time you cut one tree it's gone for fun i have kept one on my island but you will reach a point where basically you don't have any on your island left so you need to make sure that you're able to also get it from the map once again that means having done some of those researches to get this cargo depot and, and having found on the map the sawmill also the great thing with the sawmill is it's actually unlimited there's no limit so this can run forever the last one i wanted to mention is water you can use rainwater harvester these are here you unlock them pretty early and they only cost construction part level one and wood to collect water every time it rains but this is only on average four water per minute this is really not a lot the other way to get water early in the game is you're going to have groundwater there is water on your island you can see one over here one over there one over there one over there and each of those groundwater you know level as a reserve here for example you can see 15,000. this is the reserve status for this groundwater over here you put a grain water pump this will take some of this water out when it rains some of the water will come back so it will get go up but basically if you have too many groundwater pumps and in general the rule of thumb is more than three then this will start to go down the rain won't be enough to keep this reserve full and therefore at some point you'll get to zero and then you don't have any water left on your island and you're in big trouble there is also a groundwater well on the map that is unlimited so you may be able to use that but frankly for the water it's probably more a case of starting to use seawater you pump the seawater that is sort of unlimited right with a pump like this 120 seawater per minute and this is unlimited right there's the the ocean is unlimited and then you're going to transform the seawater first in a basic distiller like this one where you're adding a bit of coal to get this water and later in a thermal desalinator like this one where once again you get you taking seawater and some steam to make water this will enable you to create a lot more water of course later on there's going to be a few other ways but basically once again my point is make sure that you're able to produce a sustainable amount of water you're not just tapping into your groundwater reserve and then at some point you don't have any water left and you're stuck and then it's a death spiral now tip number five can help you if you have a problem with one of those limited resources or others the point is that when you're out of something you can trade for it you cannot trade for everything and it's not always easy to trade but it's worth noting that you can trade you'll need to build a trading dock this is this building over here it really doesn't cost a lot and you unlock it over here pretty early in the game you can press f3 or go to the map and you'll be able to see all of those quick trade offers as i said this is not all resources but some of them can be pretty useful do note that some of them right now are grayed out for example over here i cannot do it i try to click it it says require reputation to be at least one when you discover a settlement on the map like this one usually the reputation will be at zero then you need to donate resources for example over here 160 gold parts to increase that reputation first to one and then later to even more and this will start to unlock some of those quick trades or even contracts this may also increase by the way the population that you can adopt this one has a reputation level two and therefore i can adopt 20 usually when it's reputation level one you can only adopt 10 people there can also be one reason why you want to donate more resources but going back to the trades you know some of them are quite useful for example early in the game you may be cutting a lot of wood but you may not be able yet to make a lot of concrete slabs and concrete slabs are a necessary resource to make those construction parts so you can exchange some of these woods again concrete slab or you may not be producing enough food and you're worried your population is going to die out so you sell some of those construction parts level one against a bit of potato it is worth noting though that the more you trade the more the price may increase you can see now it jumped to 100 gold needed to get exactly the same amount but trade again this will increase now to 125 so one additional tip over here is to try to do a few trades and then stop and wait a bit more and then do it again rather than trading a lot at once tip number six it's really important for you to understand your priorities 
in terms of resources and delivery and to manage that manage that with the priority tools and the alerts some resources are definitely a lot more important than others you don't feed your population your population is dead it's game over you don't have any fuel it will be pretty hard to do anything your truck can't move you can't dig your ship can't go on the map to get more resources you're basically stuck once again on the other hand if i'm out of consumer electronics for example the only thing that will happen is i will lose a bit of unity it's not even like i'm going to lose unity it's just that my production of unity decreases or if i'm out of construction parts for example well i can't build a new factory but nothing else will happen right the game will continue my city will survive so the first thing you need to do is over here we have a great tool tip where you can select resources you want to keep an eye out click on it you will see here are all of the resources i've unlocked if i click on this pin button on the side here this will add or this will take out the resources then we can also even move them around if you want to keep the most important one at the top like i have fuel at the top that's really important for me or if you want to put all of the food together you know my food starts over here and then it continues these are all my food then the second is you should use priority systems to manage this there are sort of three priority levels that we'll discuss the first one is when you click on any building you will see at the top the priority this is the general priority for the workers and the electricity this means that if i don't have enough worker or enough electricity for all of my building on my island first the ones that are priority number one will get some work and some electricity then all of the buildings that are priority number two will get some and then obviously what you understand is that if i don't have enough any building that is priority 15 for example will definitely not get anything but with that i can make sure for example that my food production is at priority number one I can make sure that my electricity production is at priority number one versus my research or maybe my consumer electronics should be priority you know 12 13 14. this way again we'll make sure that if we don't have enough electricity the right buildings are working the second type of priority is linked to the import of export or delivery let's say of resources you will see for example in your uni storage but also in many other buildings we are once again the priority number one will be of course prioritized versus the priority 15 will be deprioritized completely it will often happen in the game where you may not have actually enough vehicles the vehicles are busy they're trying to build something new or destroy something you may not have enough vehicles to deliver everything you want to deliver at this point right so once again the vehicles will prioritize the high priority but the other priority that many people ignore which i think is a big mistake because this is super useful are the balancers on all of your conveyors you can put those balancers where you have eight you know entry or exit points you can have only one entry point and seven exit points or you can have four and four it doesn't matter what's important is you can put priorities for example over here this is my production of iron this one over here is going to my maintenance production versus this one is going for everything else and here i have priority out of course on the maintenance one i want to make sure that first all of the iron that i produce goes into my maintenance when the maintenance is full then we can do something else or a similar example is over here i have on this big blue storage my glass mix on this one over here my broken glass which is the recyclable of this glass mix in the balancer i'm making sure that the priority in is actually the broken glass i want to make sure that we use recyclables first then when we are out of recyclables then we're going to use new resources because remember the resources are limiting on the map so it's best to use in a sort of virtuous circle recyclable recyclable always and always and then just when i can't then use new resources and then the last aspect around those priorities is the alerts. In all of your storages, you can click on this alert button here and notify if it's empty, below 25, below 50, below 75, or if it's full, above 25, above 50, above 75. You can even have both if you want. In some cases, that could be useful. If you want to always have some, but never too much. In this case, for example, over here, this is recyclable. If this gets full, that means this will start to get full and you know my people will start to get very unhappy so i want to make sure i get an alert when this gets full or here for example you can see all of my storages of food this is vegetables food meat etc so again it's very important that you understand which resources are more important than others like your food your fuel and that then you manage your city accordingly by having the right priorities 
subscribe alerts. Don't hesitate to tell me in the comments below if you're not sure if a resource is actually a priority, not a priority, and I'll tell you. Now, mining is obviously a huge part of this game, so let me give you a few tips. The first one, as I said earlier, is press L to see the overlay of resources. I have a lot of gold over here, for example, right? And in particular, I wanted to show you what those bars mean. What this bar over here means is that I have four, five layers of rock before getting into three, four layers of gold, right? So I'll need to dig those four layers before getting to the gold, and then I'll be able to get gold for four or five layers type of. Versus over here, it means that, you know, if I dig, I'll get only gold for almost 10, 15 layers, which you can also see, right? There's a lot of gold over here. Mining is also something you will unlock very early in the game with this vehicle and mining research right away over here. You'll unlock the small excavator, the pickup, and the mine control tower. This one is a very important one. You can see I have one over here, one over there. You will find it in your building for vehicle tab. Over here, the mine control tower. You place it where you want to dig. And basically a couple of things. When you click on it, first of all, you'll be able to assign excavator and trucks. These are excavator and trucks that will be only doing the mining. They will be only linked to that uh, mine control tower and focus on this. This is necessary. You know, this will not work if you don't have at least one excavator and at least one truck. And the second thing you'll have to tell them is you'll have to tell them where and what to dig. You'll click over here on this mining designation or excavator button or you press M and this will bring you to this yellow tooltip. This yellow tooltip, you'll be able to say where to mine and at what level. What I suggest at the beginning is you press F to make the digging flat. This will only dig, for example, at level two, which is the sort of flat level of my island over here. With that, for example, I will do like this. This means that the excavator will dig this mountain make it flat whatever the the top of the mountain is it will make it flat this very light yellow means there's nothing to dig this normal yellow orange over here means we're going to start digging this is possible to dig we're going to dig a bit and now the red that are a bit more in the back basically means we can't dig right now because it's not accessible there's a mountain on this side so the excavator can't reach it and it also can't reach you know from this side because there's more to dig before we get to this. This will be a lot more important when you start also digging up and down. But personally, I do suggest that you first go flat like I'm doing over here. You know, I'm going flat all the way and then we can go down. To go down, you'll do something like this. You'll probably put some walls, you start going down and then you'll dig more and more. A few other small tips related to mining is is the rule of thumb is that you'll always need more trucks than excavators. I can see over here, for example, that this excavator was waiting. It was waiting for a truck to arrive. Now a truck has arrived. So it's working. This one is working. Now, you know, they're going to both be full. This one is waiting. This one is waiting. So that means I don't have enough truck. I need to put more truck if I want these excavators to be sort of working at 100%. And the other tip is that you want your truck that are focused on this mining operation to not travel too far. You want them to focus on this mining operation and you can have other truck do the big transport. And the way to do that is very close to your mine. You're going to put some storage for the rock, some storage for the dirt, so that they deliver that over here. And then they can go back to mining the precious resource. For example, in this case over here, this is the iron ore. Tip number eight is that as much as we've talked about trucks so far, the reality is as soon as you can, you should build belts. Belts are amazing, they will simplify your life a lot. For liquids, you can actually use pipe right away from the start. On the other resources, you will unlock just a bit later. But as soon as you unlock it, I do suggest you start using them. Because with those conveyors, you will save on fuel and on maintenance. Your trucks won't have to deliver all of those resources. You can focus your trucks on more important elements. Do not know that the conveyors always require a bit of electricity, not the pipes, the conveyors. That should really not be a problem. That should not limit your development in terms of an electricity need, but still important to note. And as I said, it's the longer it is and the faster it is, the more electricity you will consume, which is also one of the reasons why you want to try to make those things as compact as possible, right? So you use less electricity. And you also use, by the way, less resources to create those belts, right? Because each of the belts will cost you parts. I have on my channel a full playlist of cool layouts. Don't hesitate to check in the video description below if you want to see it. But once again, try to make them compact. 
but try to also use belts as soon as possible. Tip number 9 is when you unlock new buildings, you may have a tendency to just delete the old one, put a new one on top of it, replace it right away. Do be careful about that. There's a couple of things I want to say over here. The first one is for electricity production. At the beginning, you only have your diesel generator, then you may move into nuclear, solar panels. So there's many ways to make electricity. But the first tip over here is always keep those diesel generators you have from the start. Postpose them so they don't cost you any you know, maintenance, any people, but keep them. Keep them somewhere, keep them with a bit of fuel over here because you never know what's going to happen, you know. Those high pressure turbines, even those nuclear reactors and all of this, they are a bit finicky. They don't always work perfectly 100% of the time. Or maybe you just need a bit more electricity than what you can produce right now. So having those digital generators somewhere can definitely save you big time. And this basically leads me to the bigger tip I want to tell you is my suggestion is never delete the old build until you're really sure that the new build is working perfectly. And if you can, if you have the space, actually just keep it. Pause it, but keep it. Because your old build was working. It was working. Maybe it wasn't perfect. Maybe it was consuming more than the new one. But at least it was working. The new build, you're not so sure. This is in particular very important if you're touching anything linked to maintenance, food, or fuel. Because remember, if you don't have any of those things, your city will completely crumble, right? So if you're creating a new maintenance center or if you're touching the resources, the inputs linked to maintenance, for example, you're revamping your iron production and you need the iron for the electronics and the electronics for the maintenance. If you're doing that, I definitely suggest that you actually don't delete the old one. You keep the old one running and then you start creating your new one. When the new one really is working, then you can pause delete the old one before we talk about tip number 10 which is a big one remember i do have a full playlist on the channel we started this map completely from scratch and now we have almost 5600 population they're getting all types of food they're getting all types of bonuses we're making tons of unity we can also send rocket into space and all of this but and i also have other tutorials and guides on the channel and i think it's also a good time if you're still watching to smash this like button I mean, this means this was a bit entertaining or helpful so that the YouTube algorithm knows to share this with more people out there. Tip number 10 is about research. Research is a huge part of the game, but it's not so easy. And there's a couple of things I wanted to say. The first one is that, in my opinion, this should be your priority 15. You should do research if everything else is working. The second tip related to research is unlocking something doesn't mean you have to use it right away. Remember one of the first tips we discussed is don't overexpand. Make sure that first whatever you have is working before moving to the next thing. This really definitely applies to research. There are moments in the game where you're going to unlock many different things. And we of course all have a tendency to jump into those new shiny things. But this will lead to you losing. You need to be careful. You need to go slow. Don't think you need to use whatever you just unlock. But at the same time of course research is important it's actually even necessary in many instances if you remember as i said at the beginning you know you're going to run out of crude oil you're going to run out of wood on your island you need to make sure that you get to the cargo depot before that happens right so it's necessary to research at some point and others and on top of that it's also pretty useful because most of the time when you unlock level two of something this is better than level one a couple of examples I wanted to show you is the cooling tower. We have the small cooling tower and the large cooling tower. We're taking 24 of steam and making 12 of water, right? So it's half. We're losing half or there's an efficiency of 50%. Now, if we look at the big one, we're taking 96 and we're getting 72. So it is three quarter, right? This is a 75% efficiency. So it's better. We're wasting less. Or another example is the blast furnace, right? We have the blast furnace level 1. That's going to take 24 and 9 coal to make 24 molten iron. Now, if we move into the level 2, it's going to take 36 plus 15 of coal to make 48. So let's say that we want to make 48, like we're doing in the blast furnace level 2, but with the level 1. Well, first of all, we're going to need two of these. So that's going to take more space. But we're going to have two of these which means we're going to have 48 of iron ore and we're going to have 18 of coal, right? So that means more coal and a lot more iron ore. 
So make sure you do resources, but make it when everything else is working. Captain of Industry is definitely an amazing game, not the simplest, but not impossible to play if you follow those 10 tips. I'd also love to hear from you if you have other tips or if you're facing specific challenges and would like me to help, share in the comments below. Again, thanks for watching, smash the like button and I hope to see you next time on the channel for more Captain of Industry and other strategy, city building and simulation games.